Morning everybody, it's David on Sunday morning and here we are going to do, we're going to try to do a gouache painting today, this morning. Um, I decided I, I got this new um, palette and I'm going to show you, it's a new palette and this is great for gouache. Um, this gouache paint of course is um, opaque watercolor and I'm using not the acrylic gouache, I'm using the regular watercolor gouache. I don't think they call it watercolor gouache but it is the... Um, um, the gouache Holbein artistic gouache and so I have the four boxes the four different boxes of this and I chose about 24 colors in this new packaging and so we're gonna try to um, we're gonna try to use this uh, I heard that this keeps them really moist forever you know and um, so that's really nice and even the acrylic gouache and so we're gonna try that today and um, I'm gonna be working on let me just go to my tabletop and I'll show you right away I'm going to be working on a scene that is a marine scene. Um, I, I love painting boats. And as you can tell, here is my new palette. And it's air uh, airtight. And so it comes in these little... Little... Um, thing. I just filled it up this morning. And um, I picked the, chose these colors. And this is like a silicone top to it. And again, it's called... Let me see what it's called. It's called... It's from, I got it from Amazon. I'll put it into, when I put this on YouTube, I'll put it in the description as part of the, of the video. And, um, yeah, it's called a Transon, Transon paint storage box. And I'm, it's, like I said, you could put, this is gouache paint, gouache, uh, watercolor, whole bunch gouache. And it's opaque watercolor is what it is. Um, it's not transparent watercolor. Like I normally use their transparent, whole bind transparent watercolor, but I kind of use the the opaques just like the watercolor, and then at for the end, what I do is I make it thick. I on some parts I'll make it thick. So um, cheers, everybody. Here's my morning cup of coffee, <laughs> and I haven't even drank anything yet, so <laughs> this is gonna be tasting great. So cheers, cheers, cheers. I'm missing a, a breakfast over at my mom's, but I'll go back there in a little bit and hopefully I'll, um, they'll have something left over for me. And so here we're going to put this closer. This is my water container. And so what you see here is a scene. And let me just see if there is anybody watching. <laughs> so we're going to really quickly go over and see. Ah, we have one person watching. Okay, and I'll, I'll be—I'm filming it, and so that I put it on. I'll put it on YouTube, and then, I'll, like I said, I'll put the colors of the gouache, and I'll put everything on. Put everything on here, and actually, let me just make sure I have my sound off, so you don't get any reverb. And so, what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna start with the sky, and again, this what I'm working on is a board, is a hard board. And the board is painted with a gesso ground, um, which you can put on anything, the gesso ground. A couple companies make them. And Holbein even makes a um, gel, an acrylic gel that has like, it's kind of, uh, you can almost absorb the paint also. Um, so it's kind of a gesso ground that absorbs. And basically that's what it's called, absorbent gesso ground. Or an acrylic gel um, that is absorb some of the paint the paint and stuff and so but with with this being gouache i'm going to use it so that let me just see one second here if i have my I my gloves around okay um so i'm going to do it like a watercolor but i'll finish it like a gouache painting and so it kind of feels like a hot pressed paper when you use it there's also ampersand that makes a panel that is also like this where um it just sits on top a little bit and so it doesn't act totally like paper and i'm not, and i wanted to use this only because i want to try the gouache on the paper and on this and so i just figure i'm going to just try all kinds of new stuff in this morning and just experimenting so i'll wet the surface just like do watercolor paper and um looks like the mountains are darker so i can go right through the mountains <clears throat> And I kind of use it almost like acrylics. I use it a little bit thicker, but I still do like a watercolor technique where I go down and I just lay it into the wash and I'll be using a little bit of, now this is a brand new palette. So uh, my colors, my color choices will probably be different from what my regular palette is. 
And so I'm just going to go in here and I have to remember where some of these colors are and what some of the colors are, especially the dark ones because all the dark colors are the same. So that's black. And that's a black blue. This is a purple. This is a white. And um, I'm just going to put this on here. And even though, like I was teaching in the last couple of weeks, is how to let your pigment um, soften itself. Even on this, it works. It works a little bit differently. You can see there's my texture of my brush through there. So you're going to see texture in the brushwork. But here we're going to go and take and make the sky kind of like cloudy. And then since I'm using it wet, I also don't mind using white. And again, this is opaque, so it will, it's looking kind of transparent right now. But uh, um, if I let it dry and then put thick on top of that, uh, that'll be just fine. But now I want soft edges and even in gouache, soft edges are done with a lot of water and putting the pigment on. Like you, when you use it really thick without water, you have to smooth it out and blend it. But um, I'm using it like watercolor basically right now. I'm just basically, this is watercolor, it's opaque watercolor, but I'm using it like a transparent watercolor where I'm uh, um, applying it onto the board in a wet puddle and so it'll give me a soft edge. You know, I, I think to myself, um, so many people make things di so difficult for themselves thinking that the medium that you're using, if you're using a water medium and even oils, really, I've used oils, especially the aqua oils, I've used just like watercolor. So if you learn to use the, the materials that are um, water-based, you know, water, the water media mediums, you can just use it like you're using watercolor. And so learn how to um, float your pigment and to get soft edges and then you don't have to blend I'm just letting the water blend it and you can still blend later on with a thick amount of paint and so now I'm just putting it on there again a nice thing about the, my gouache here is that if on my panel look at down here I've got this smudge I made and I had it in my case and so I got all this stuff but I'm going to cover it with opaque so it doesn't really matter if I have a little bit of something happening there in the in, on my paper because I can cover it and if there's a little bit of you know it's darkness in here I can just cover it with an opaque color and use it thicker and and this actually when you go back to using your regular watercolor your transparent watercolor then it um, helps because it you learn how to use the pigment thicker and most most watercolors <clears throat> and who are students that's my biggest gripe with what they're not using enough paint. They just don't use enough paint to let the paint, you know, soften itself and cover an area. And also it dries 20% lighter. So when you're putting it down, put it thick enough so that it will darken to the point where you want it. So make it actually 20% darker. Gouache does the same thing. It's no different from watercolor, but if you're using it really thick, like an oil, like when you're putting it on there very thick, then yes, it will pretty much stay to what you're putting on. The thicker the paint, the more it's gonna stay to the color because it's all about the pigment. The reason it gets lighter as a watercolor is because there's not much pigment out there. It looks like a lot when you're putting it first on, but when the water evaporates, then it, it looks like um, whatever pigment's left, that's the, the, the darkness you get. So there is the sky. That was very fast. And now we're going to do the water right away because it's a big area. I like to do my lights first. And my light is my water and my parts of my boats and my buildings and the water in front here is my lights. And so that I do to establish my light pattern. Now this is dark. And so watch this. I'm going to take white over it, opaque white. I'm just going to tap over that. While I'm wetting, I'm wetting the surface because I do want some soft edges down here. And I'm going to take account that... Um, that these mountains are gonna be dark later so that we'll put the reflections in there right now and so there's a big area of lights and this is part of my three-step process it doesn't matter if you're doing gouache or watercolor i do every painting in three steps i kind of this is my new thing right now is my three-step process where you take and you do your lights first which are your color scheme your color and your lights that's what you put in first and um you do the biggest areas of that and so i'm going to go in here and just do those big areas and I'm using a lot of grays. I don't want this really colorful. I kind of like the, the muted um, t tones in this painting, in this photo. And so I'm going to try to keep capture those. And I, I use black and I use purple and I use white. And, and especially with gouache, um, I have no problem with that. 
I know a lot of teachers have you mix your darks. Um, that's fine. You know, it's a good way of learning how to make a colorful dark. But I tend to take the black and then I put color into it. So it's kind of the same thing, I think, that I'm putting blue into my black. And then it'll be like a bluish black, a bluish dark. And so I'm going to put that a little bit darker in here. And I'm doing this all while it's wet so I get soft edges. And I, now, again, it is thicker than... Um, there's a more pigment in gouache than there is finely ground pigment in, especially Holbein gouache is more finely ground and a lot more pigment to make it opaque. Um, that's kind of the difference between the opaque watercolor and the transparent watercolor. They have more covering in, and they don't put whitening. That's one thing I ask them. It's like a lot of companies for their gouache, they put white, they white, they use whiteners to whiten the um, thing and make it opaque. I hope I doesn't do that. They don't put white in their colors. And so the old, old school of gouache has always been that they're really kind of pastel -y. And here they're not. They're not pastel -y at all. Look at, the, look at these colors. They're just like my watercolors, and they don't look like gouache at all. Matter of fact, if I put these next to my other, other palette, you can't tell the difference. So that's why I'm using this palette, because they do um, tend to... Uh, when I put them in, they're not like the Holbein watercolors, where the Holbein watercolors do not dry out to a hard rock. These don't dry to, uh, they dry harder, but they're, they just still rejuvenate. They really still rejuvenate in a palette. But in this palette, because I'm going to be using this um, airtight seal with a silicone seal on it, they'll be like, it'll be fresh as ever for a long time. So I don't have to worry about that. Because you always want to use fresh, fresh paint. You know, that's the one thing you want to use fresh paint when you're painting watercolor or gouache because it's the amount of pigment that shows what's happening because the water, once it evaporates, it's not there anymore. So it's whatever pigment is left in your, in your, on your painting that's important, right? So you need to get some good pigment and Holbein is probably one of the best I, I found. I mean, I really love Holbein paints and that's how come I use them. And especially their watercolors, the fact that they don't dry out because they don't use Oxcol. Uh, to me, that's just, you know, a no-brainer. Why, why would you use anything else if it dries out to a hard clump and you're wasting paint? Here, I find that it's so nice that it doesn't dry out. And like I said, with the gouache, it's a little bit different. And so I'm using this palette so that it doesn't dry out either. So nice little... Put the waves in right away. Again, this is my, um, I am putting some of my darks in there right now, but it's like this three-step process doesn't mean you have to like stop and do the next step. This is kind of like the first step and the second step all in one because I've got my lights kind of done. And so I'm going into my second step right at the, at the same time. Like you can bring the steps together because depending on what you're painting and how fast you're painting the big areas. Now I'm going and just getting some of these. These are still my lights and mediums. I'm not putting in my detailed darks, which is the, is the final step. The final step was always put in your, put in your detailed darks. And this board, you can tell it absorbs a little bit. It's a gesso that absorbs. It's a white paint that absorbs, absorbs pigment. And, um, I, I, I think it must have something like, um, what do you call it? Marble dust in it or something so that it absorbs into the white paint. And so it, it tends up being feeling like a piece of paper and you can pretty much paint this on anything, the um, gesso ground. And um, because it's kind of neat because you can just, I can put on shoes, you can do a watercolor on shoes or water medium. Again, water medium, I find to be all the things. Like it could be watercolor, acrylics. And I just watched a demonstration by Pat Dews, who is an abstract artist. And she uses all kinds of the inks, acrylic inks and gouache and, and um, acrylic, um, heavy bodied. I mean, just all the things that she used, it was really cool to watch. And I, I kind of fully agree with her that it's kind of fun to use all those things. Why not? You know, it's whatever your painting is done that looks cool. That's what you want. Now I'm going to go into my large mediums and darks, and that's the mountains. Um, I have to be a little bit of careful because I do want to make it look kind of like what what's on the picture with some of the snow up there. So that's still some of my lights. And um, so I'm just going to go in here and take a little bit more time because I want to make the mountains look kind of nice. And still, though, I'm still following my steps. I'm still doing my large mediums now. My, my large mediums and darks, that's the second step. And so I'm kind of into my second step 
and even though there are some lights in this part, but it's the big area that I'm doing. I'm trying to do the big area, even though there are small little parts to it, I still try to make it big. Morning, Car. Morning, Sally. And so we're just going to go in here and just... I really I enjoy this board only because um, I really enjoy working on Bristol board. Bristol board is like a really hot press um, and it, it's smooth and it's hard to get a soft edge. But like if you do what I do where you um, lay it down and wet it and then go right on top of it on the water, it will smooth itself out. I don't care what you're using. That's it'll work on it. You can take a piece of glass and, and wet it and put the pigment on there. It will give you a soft edge in there. Because the water is just going to make it soft edge, right? I mean, it's just automatic. And so the gouache here now is opaque. And so I'm covering up the white and I'm doing it. I'm wetting it as I go along, just like a watercolor. No different. I'm not really working that much different from how I do my watercolors. Um, the end process will be a little bit different because when I get to the end, I will make it some of the parts thick. I mean, literally like I'm doing acrylics where I'm really putting it on very, very thick camera over a little bit here so you can see what I'm doing. <laughs> Sorry. There we go. I have my picture up on the on the screen here so I can see what I'm doing. Or this is the first time I've done this picture. And so a lot of times when you're doing a picture for the first time, when I do my Thursday nights and I do it already in the, in the afternoon in class, it's a little bit easier. When you're doing it for the first time, you have to think a little bit more because you didn't do it before. And so what's the process? What are, what are you doing? I mean, I'm going to do my three step process, but what is involved in that three step process? What are you painting first? What are you painting second? And that sometimes is a good thing to do is do like a, a quick study first, like a little thumbnail and just get in there. And, and so as the mountains go back, I'm going to take them more blue. So I'm taking a little bit of blue here. And I know this looks very pale and a lot of grace, but I, I, you know, it's a, that's what the look is. It's not bright and colorful. I mean, I could make it bright and colorful too, but this is more, I, I want it to be more gray and blues as it goes to the distance. And I even have gray in this um, set here. And so I'm gonna make it a little bit darker around here. I'm going around, I could use masking fluid, but why not? In a gouache, I'm not gonna use masking fluid because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a thick white paint. I'm just gonna slather it on there. For later so you don't need to really use white paint and actually i could probably even go over this area instead of using the, the white of the board i could use white paint um, because i can use it thick i can literally go in here later on and also use it thick and do some softening like i would an oil or a, a, a acrylic you know it's just that that's the difference about it that you can you can, don't have to do follow these rules that you do with watercolor because you could put it on later and make it nice and thick so it's really, I can see why some people really love gouache, you know, and nowadays they used to not, people used to not like gouache. Why? Because it's a lot of times they would take and um, the colors were very pastel. All the colors were pastel. Even the darks, there really, there was no black, black. It was just, um, it was just very pastel-y colors. And they used them in advertising, actually. A lot um, of gouache was used in advertising to do the layouts for ad ads and stuff. Good morning, Barbie. Good morning, Pamela. Pam. <laughs> so we're going to go in here and get some a little bit of violet in here too. And just as the, as the mountains come forward, they get a little bit darker. And this painting is probably going to take me a little bit longer than I normally do on Sunday. But, um, and maybe even a little bit longer than an hour. But um, I just, I love doing these kind of paintings of of, of uh, boats. I'm a big boat painter. I love um, doing nautical scenes. And so this one I really, uh, I really think is a really neat picture. And look at these great um, washes I got in here. You know, it's just like a watercolor wash on a board that I uh, prepared a panel. It's basically a panel, a hardboard panel that I got it like Menards. You can get it at Home Depot Menards, the hard panels and they're, you can get the quarter inch ones. This is an eighth inch one. Um, I got an eighth inch one there and you can buy them. I think usually four feet by two feet, um, sections, or you can buy the full four by eight and then cut it down if you have a saw. Um, but, uh, you can buy it by four by eight and actually uh, you can actually even cut it with a utility knife. If you cut a lot, I mean, you have to cut it quite a bit to a uh, quarter inch, not the, not, I mean the eighth inch, the quarter inch is too thick to do that with a, with a, um, 
a utility knife, you'd be cutting forever. So as I go through here, I'm just going to take a little bit more of this purple and black and dark blue. And I noticed that back here, I want to get a little bit more dark in some spots here. And if you make it too dark, let's say you make it too dark, you can always wipe it out or put a light color on top of it too. You know, all those little things in watercolor that you can't do, you can do in, in gouache. Because again, you don't have to make it all, all soft edged and you don't all have to make it all um, transparent unless you're submitting to like TWSA. They're the shows, you know, you have to do that because they don't allow opaques. But um, if you just want to do it for yourself and do a painting, a beautiful painting, and you want to do it in gouache, um, always try things. I always tell my students, try new things and see what you like. I like, I, I mean, I, like I said, I, we just had the demonstration done by Pat Dews, and oh my gosh, I just, she's such a neat lady and so, so um, funny. <laughs> we were watching her paint and she's 80 years old and she says she's fa fabulous. She is a fabulous painter and it's just um, so, so energetic. So look her up, Pat Dews. Um, she's an abstract artist and uh, coming up in the new year, we're going to be um, starting from, from scratch. We're going to start again from new and one of the things that we're going to do is we're going to learn design. We're gonna learn design and um, I have to just learn how to teach it. And so I'm doing things a little by little and I'll be making my little, um, my lesson plans and how to teach you how to do past or um, um, abstracts. So there we are having a little bit of our mountains coming in here. So I'm gonna leave that, let that dry. And then like the little fine details you can get in there. You can put them in with thicker paint too. And like the details of the houses and stuff. And always the first, the first washes again is the light, light and um, the colors. Second step is the large, medium and darks. And so I've pretty much got my large mediums. Now my large darks, I've got to get the reflections down in here and get those dark in there. And then I'll go to my, my smaller detail darks. That's my third step. And that's the final step is the detail darks. Always go with the big, big areas first. And I don't care if it's watercolor or if it's a squash that I'm using. Um, it's all good. People find it to be so different. They, I think it's, you know, um, because it's a different name, it's a weird name. People go, what? Gouache? Gouache? What is gouache? It's just, it's, a, it's watercolor that's opaque. And so don't be afraid of it. You can mix them together too. People ask me, oh, can you mix um, watercolor and gouache together? You can mix it all together. I, you can mix acrylic onto this. I can take my acrylic and put that on there too. You know, don't be afraid of using other me mediums inside um, your medium. It all mixed together and even different brands. It doesn't matter. Um, acrylic is acrylic. <laughs> and so put them together, put them together. They don't, they, they'll be fine. Use up all your old paints that you thought, you know, just use them up. Mix them in. Now, don't mix them in your palette together. That's one thing. You know, acrylics don't put in your watercolor palette. And I have separate palettes for all that because, you know, of course, um, the pigment will dry hard uh, for acrylic. So it's, you need different palettes for that. And so here we have a nice dark, dark reflection. And I'm following my, my study here now. And this is kind of like my detail darks already because I'm getting to that point where I don't have any more big, big darks or big mediums. And so now I'm going to get to my, my detailed darks, which is the next step. And so and if you just keep that in your mind, you'll be, um, you just paint, you just paint and you'll know it automatically. That's the, that's the steps you're going to take. If you do it over and over again, something, it will become like a way to doing it over and over. And that's as an artist, that's what you're doing as a student is you want to get to a point where you're not thinking about how you're painting, you're just painting and you're doing those steps automatically without thinking. You're not working it. And so then you give time to do your little rough sketch or your, you know, you go through the process. And that's what practice helps is just going through the process and doing things. And then in the end, you'll um, just do it automatically. And then you can think of things like composition and how to do things differently and stuff. But first you got to learn how to use the medium. How do you use the medium? How do you use the watercolor? How do you use the gouache like watercolor? 
I always find that if you use if you use watercolor correctly, you can go onto all the other mediums and do the same type of thing, and then just add thicker as you go along. So I find it to be very beneficial to learn watercolor. I think it. I think when I learned watercolor through Shapiro, it helped out everything else that I was ever doing. Like it helped out my oils, helped out my acrylics. And so now we're going to go down through here and get, I'm, I'm going to make some of the boats red. Like I know there's just one red boat here, which is a great thing when you're using um, a limited palette. It, this is kind of limited palette, though I'm not thinking of it completely like that. I'm not like, I, I'm going to try to use all these colors, but a lot of times I won't have to. And so, um, but it's more limited than like putting just all the colors in there. And so now I'm going here and just... That's a boot back there. Let me see if there's a yeah, there's a boot back here. Make like that kind of like bluish boat. It's dark. And when I look at a picture, I'm always looking just at the lights and darks. I mean, I really study the lights and darks of the picture and just worry about that. That's really more important than the color. Uh, the color, yes, is it's important that you get it. You know, you mix all kinds of colors together. And make it rainbow unless you want the rainbow but then if you have it rainbow make sure that you have the values in the right spots and all these white poles that are going to be on the boat they're all going to be what i'm going to do for that i'm just going to use white paint and so i don't have to go in there and worry about um, putting masking fluid down or something like that no i don't have to worry about that i'm just going to go in here and just get the rooftops i think are darker and the, the buildings are all white which is very simple then that the rooftops i'm going to try to make all the same close to the same even if they weren't i would still make them all the same unless it was made for somebody who you know was a certain person's house and it has to look exactly like that person's house or whatever then yes maybe you want to do exactly what's there but i tend to you know i'm the artist so i i, I want to choose to make things like look the same the colors in some parts are the same and i don't want this to be rainbowy i want it to be have the feel of like fog and like a, a early morning because look at this, the sun's not out really in this picture and so the rooftops are gray and so i can use some of the colors i've used through here hey gloria from waco texas <laughs> did your did your gouache come in that clear container or did you put it in there i put it in there um this is just a this is just a transom palette you know it's just a palette that came empty and so these are my boxes of gouache and these are my boxes of gouache and so i just squeezed them all in there completely i filled up the each individual thing i filled up and i filled it up to the top because i want to be kind of airtight so if it's in the tube or if it's in this thing that's airtight what's the difference you know it's it'll keep nice and um, soft and so i won't be wasting any um, paint it's when you put just a little bit of paint in even watercolor if you just put a little bit of paint in there it's going to be it's going to dry out really fast so put the whole tube in and this one being airtight i can just put it down and seal it up and it's got a silicone thing there so it'll it'll last forever and even with the acrylic excuse me <clears throat> even with the acrylic wash i heard bob bob um oh, what, gosh, what's his last name <laughs> sorry i took his workshop and he's the one that um uh, i'll think of his name before we get done here but he, he's a gouache, he does gouache, but he does it more like an oil. He uses his gouache more like an oil paint. And so um, he uses it thick right from the get-go. And I use my gouache more like a watercolor. And I, I kind of tend to go towards more the, um, later on, I'll put it thicker, like the whites and stuff. And, and a lot of times I won't even do it thick at all. I'll just go in here and just, you know, because you don't, once I get my wash, I don't have to make it look like the wash that's done, of course. Like, but if there's something I need to make it look better and tighter and with more detail then i use it like like gouache like oils where it's thick where it's literally thick really heavy bodied or i'll go over something and then i'll put the white over like this and is if i go over it i don't have to worry so much about getting detail and then i'll use the white paint to get the detail back And another thing, too, is like, you know, you feel like you shouldn't get watercolor because you're already using like or, or get gouache because you're already using watercolor and, you know, why go to another medium? 
it's really not another medium. It's the same. It's just opaque of that medium. Watercolor and gouache are the same thing. One is opaque and one is not. And one is transparent, but you can use them together. So why not get both of them? It'll just be another thing. So for Christmas, ask for a set of gouache, you know, and like I said, you don't want to put them in the same palette and use a palette like this. Um, just have them set. I mean, this is so small, really, if you think about it, it's such a small thing. But yeah, and that, actually there are some people who do put it in their palettes together, the gua or the um, gouache and the regular watercolor, because they paint so much that it really doesn't matter then either. I mean, if you're painting a lot, nothing's going to dry out on you. What's in? Oh, here's the here's the pier. I'm not sure where this is. This this kind of looks like Alaska. I'm thinking, but this is a um, beautiful picture. I mean, I love I love these little harbor towns. Oh my gosh, if I could spend a week here painting in a place like this, oh boy, that would be cool. So now I'm doing the dock and all these little boats back here. Uh, I do them by negative painting around them and they're not gonna be very um, detailed I'm not that kind of painter I'm not gonna go in there and um, spend a lot of time on making them look exactly like what is in there I'm doing more of an interpretation of what's there I'm more of a um, more of an impressionist than I am a realist <laughs> or a hyper realist um, but if you are a realist or a hyper realist um, you would your drawing would be very important and you could probably work a little bit slower because you want to make things look exactly like what they are in the photo and there's nothing wrong with that there's some people that uh, just that's the way they work and they have to work that way that, that's all they know and so i would still suggest to them though that um make sure your drawing is right on i mean if you're doing hyper realism you better have some really good drawing skills and, or have a projector i'm trying to um I was going to go out and this week's newsletter is going to be about all the kinds of products that I've bought and stuff and for gifts and stuff. So it's going to be about gifts this week. And, um, I've been trying to test them. The only thing I haven't tested is that Lucy, um, drawing, drawing thing. It's called a Lucy and it's like where you look into it and you can see in the distance and stuff. And it's just, it's very expensive. It's like a hundred and I think $180 and, uh, I just, can't see spending that much money for it, the, the device but I may have to break down and just try and get in just to see if it how it works and stuff for you guys if it works really well for you you know if, if that's the way you're gonna learn how to draw then um, that's good but um, yeah it's just kind of expensive but if it's a tool it's a tool to trade then sometimes that's a not a bad thing to get and that's the way you're gonna I mean my number one thing is drawing I mean you have to your drawing has to be good no matter what it's like that's the number one in my in my classes is that you have to have a good drawing before you start painting because if you don't have a good drawing you're not going to get a night great painting because it's not going to be looking like what you want it to look like now i'm going and getting my detailed darks right this is all detailed darks and let me put a little bit of red dark red into this water here like I said, this is going to take a little bit longer than my average um, thing because there's a lot in here. And I want to take a little bit more time into this. Look at these nice little red um, bumpers on the side of this pier here. And put them in the water. I need to get my small brush because now I'm going to be working all these little buildings back here. Well, no, actually, let's work our bigger dark yet. I still want to get my... Now I'm going to go in with my thicker paint. And I'm going to start working my mountain, It'll get a little bit darker. Any questions? So I'm going in here with a little bit darker. Now this is not wet in a wet, so I'm going to get all hard edges, but that's okay because that's what I want. I want to kind of go in here and get this hard edge that's on the side of the mountain here and make the mountain look more realistic, like what it is. This is my center of interest, this whole area. From back to front that's all my center of interest so there's no problem to go in there and get that look nice and um nice and detailed i'm definitely not you know i'm, I'm not a hyper realist but you know there's time and place for um details where you really have to spend some time and making it look like what the object is check out mary white i mean if you look at her work she is like her portraits and stuff the portraits are almost like photographic but then the rest of the painting has this soft edges to it and stuff so 
you know, being tight and being hard edged and being um, tight in the picture is not a bad thing. It's, it's a thing that you can do in your painting to make the center of interest pop. And it could be part of your style, you know, that you make it nice and tight. There's so many different styles and what you want to do is get a style that nobody else has and just that you're maybe you're tight, really, really tight. And then there's a part of your painting that's really, really loose. You know, what is your style? What is it that makes you stand away from other people's work? That's how you win the shows is that, you know, their judges are looking for work that is different and knocks their socks off, you know, that they look at it and go, wow, that's so cool. You know, don't paint paintings that they paint because they already know that, you know, you're not going to, you're not going to get into the shows if you paint the paintings what the juries are, um, can do. You know, I know a lot of people try to make it look like their work, but no, don't do that. I've heard that from a bunch of artists out there saying that yeah, they, they don't want to see work that they can do. They want to see work that is something that they couldn't do and they would love to be able to do that. I can see that because when I judge a show, I, I, I look for the wow factor and I'm like, wow, you know, how do they do that? Or and that's, that's what I look for myself. Of course, you're going to look for things like that are important of that medium, you know, making sure that medium looks like what it is. It looks professional. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. My, this is not beer. This is coffee. <laughs> this is my mug. <laughs> ah, so now I'm going to go in here and get some more detail. And now I'm just going in there and making things a little bit more detailed. Putting in like the sides and windows. And, and I don't really kind of look at the picture so much. I kind of determine myself that the front of these buildings are going to be light and the sides are going to be dark. If I were spending a long time and let's say this is really important back there, then yes, and maybe I go in there and do some things where they're really, really tight, but I make sure I draw them in exactly the way I want to paint them too. That's another thing. When your drawing is really detailed, then you tend to uh, do more detail in it also. So that's why I want to have your drawing looking really good. In this building let me just take this up really quick let me show you what this is really so look at all those boats back there and all the windows and there's some red buildings back there and that one boat on the side is blue which stands out like two sort of like this if you look at that one boat right in this corner or in the right over there that um boat is blue and so i don't want to make that blue though so i'm just going to make it dark and so it doesn't stand out like a sore thumb so this boat right here was blue but i'm just going to make it a darker color. I'm gonna have to get some rich blacks in here, some really dark darks in here because that'll pop the areas. Because if my darkest dark is this, then when I put that, I'll bring things forward, and that's a really fine fine detail. And that'll, here's an engine. I don't have to put quite as much into the water of that if I don't want need to. Now I'm gonna put a little bit of that in here. I'm gonna use my bigger brush and get more accomplished. Get some more thicker red. Next thing is when like with this, if I wanna put a really, let's say I wanna put a really bright thick red right here. Watch this, I'm just gonna take it really thick and I'm gonna lay it on there like oils. And I'll put it on real thick. It doesn't need to look like it's floating because I'm, it's opaque and so I don't have to go in there and make it look like it's transparent and make it floating. I can just put a big gob on there and actually make it so that it's physically, physically, it's above the white or that I can put white on there just so thick like oil painters do and to make it actually physically, it's thicker and it comes up. So this boat I want to do there. This, there's two buildings back here that are red. And then I'm going to do some of these posts dark. I'm going to use my rigger. So go and get your Christmas list together and tell your, tell your civic and others or your family to get you some gouache. And actually, um, I really like the, the, um, 
if you're gonna get gouache, I would even suggest maybe getting the acrylic gouache. It's really a big popular thing right now, the acrylic gouache. And use it like watercolor, but um, you can use it like oils and watercolor all at once. You know, it's just, and um, it, in that palette, it also stays fresh. So you don't have to worry about it drying out like acrylic. And even the regular acrylics, put regular acrylics, if you're using acrylics, use them on a palette like this because they stay, they can stay forever. You know, same thing. It's like they're in a tube basically because they don't dry out in a tube, right? And so if you have an airtight palette like this um, and put the whole thing in there, it acts like a, like a tube basically. And you put the thing in there and a lot of people even put them in the refrigerator, their acrylics. And um, I, I know a couple of students of mine up in Dillman's, um, I had given them and they bought one of my palettes, the lockbox palettes. And um, she saved it for about a year, I think. And she brought it back the next year in the class and so it, it, it's proven that it, it stays. So see how I'm doing the blacks now? I'm doing really nice darks. I'm getting detailed darks. There's a lot of these posts and stuff going on up. And I'm going to put white afterwards. But first I'm going to put my darks. And that's what um, oil painters do is they use their darks first and then put the um, white on top of that. Um, so I'm doing a little bit of watercolor in the beginning, but I'm finishing it off more like a, like an oil painting where I, then I go in there with my darks and make them thick. Now I like this a little bit darkened through here. Oh, look at the watermark I got up there. <laughs> oh boy. I'll show you how to fix it. It's no big deal on paper like this on board. Same thing with this little thing. You just rub it. Just rub it away. Make it, it's going to be a hard edge, of course, um, but a little bit of blue in here. Get this a little bit darker right through here. I remember in school we were taught to draw people and objects and the scale of things. You do a lot of boats and rocks, and as a city girl, I prefer painting different. As a painter, I have learned to draw all over again. You make it all seem, oh, let me see, <laughs> effortless. And if you make a mistake, it never shows. Thank you for sharing your talent with us. No problem, Gloria. <laughs> you know, um, the biggest secret to anything is just doing it a lot. You know, I, I tell all my students all the time, if you want, and actually that's what Pat Dews was saying too, just do a lot of drawing, a lot of drawing, a lot of painting. Um, that's how you get better. It's just doing a lot of it and you can do tons and tons of terrible drawings but each one you're going to learn something you're all you're always going to learn and you learn what you don't want to do next time you know so it's just a, it's the amount of painting that you do it really is and and it doesn't matter if that painting turned out or not it, it really doesn't matter it matters that you just paint paint a lot and do a lot of it I mean, I do a lot, a lot of painting and I, I, even myself, I learn, I learn as I go along and I learn so much from just teaching too. If you ever want to learn a lot, write really quickly, uh, teach also. It's another thing. Teach, you know, teach young students, teach, um, adult, adult class, go to a place and teach, you know, you're going to learn a lot. Now in here, this seems really light. So what's going on there? Hold on to me. Oh, get my screen back. So this through here all should be a little bit darker. And this whole thing in here is dark. Except for some of the reflections in the boats. And there's a lot going on in a lot of this, but um, simplify it. Look and squint your eyes. What you see when you squint your eyes is what you paint and the way you paint. Because then um, you capture the big lights and darks. And what's the more important, like I always tell you, you got to capture the big lights and darks. And I noticed that I have all my lights, but my darks are not kind of put together. Like these mountains all kind of look like they're in the, in the light area still. So they all should be a little bit darker. And so I'm going to go in there and darken them. Darken them up a little bit. And I'm using thicker paint now. And I don't need to worry about getting it, about getting it too um, thick. I'm looking to get it thick. That's okay. Again, it is gouache. And for anybody who just started coming in here, this is not watercolor. 
this is opaque watercolor. So it is watercolor, but it's just opaque. So we're making this a little bit darker. And right over that. Now I get hard edges, but if I add water while I'm doing this, it, it'll turn to be looking a little bit more watercolor-like. But really, it doesn't have to look like a watercolor. Um, it just has to look like a good painting. And so I just wanted to come in here and make it look like a nice painting. Do you need to make it look exactly like the photo? No. I just want to make it look like a nice painting. It doesn't matter if it's acrylic, oils, watercolor, gouache. It's a really dark, dark in the bottom of this boat. And now let's get the water nice and dark here. Looks like the water gets dark and see, I've got my big darks. I'm still, in a way, I'm still following my rules. You know, it's still the three step process. I'm still going in here and getting my big areas and then my detailed darks. Yes, I went in my detailed darks, but I can jump back and forth and go back to my other step here, my big darks. these nice little waves in there look at how nice horizontal these things are nice. I'm using a uh, plastic um, meat tray <laughs> um, you can probably use something better than that if you have a porcelain tray or something that works out good too Pat Dews D-E-W-S for the uh, the uh, abstract artist that I was that had come to our well she's from Florida she's in Florida right now and I've seen her work at AWS a lot she's an abstract artist but her work her abstracts are really just amazing really amazing design sense and um but Pat Dews P-A-T D-E-W-S nice and dark I'm still going to get my lights. I'm still, I still haven't done my whites. That's one thing. I, at the end, when you normally are done and you take the masking fluid off to get your lights in watercolor, a transparent watercolor, here I'm just going to use white paint. And I'm just going to go over it with thick white paint to get my really detailed reflections and all those little whites that are kind of really small and thin. And I'm going to get that later. And it'll be just as soon as I get these big darks done here. It looks like these are drying also because I'm not using them. I'm still using them like watercolor, so I'm getting 20% lighter when they dry. If I was using it thicker, I wouldn't get that, but I'm still using them pretty thin. Uh, I'm not a traditional um, gouache painter. I still use them a lot like watercolor. And um, as I go along, though, I kind of get thicker. And actually, this year I'm adding a into my Dillman's class. I'm not doing an acrylic class this year. I am doing a gouache class. Which, but it has acrylic gouache in it. So it is kind of still the acrylics, um, but we have watercolor and acrylic together. If you're gonna take my um, my Dillman's gouache class, that will be this, this gouache I'm using right now and acrylic gouache. So you get a little bit two, two and one again. And again, my, my classes at Dillman's, you don't bring anything. You don't bring any materials, I bring it all. Um, it'll all be whole by materials and Legion papers. We got the, you'd be using black watercolor paper from Legion. Or you'd be using Yupo. I may even make up some of these panels one of these days and see if you guys want to try a panel. I know Ampersand makes them, but I'm, I'm not associated with, Am or with um, Ampersand. Um, but you can try them too. And look at how you can rub out too. Isn't this neat? All right, so let's get into our white paint now. Let me, oh, I want to show you how to get rid of that, the little water spots. Some artists would um, leave that there and just make it more of them. But if you want to get rid of it, I'm just going to rub over it, wet it. I'm just going to wet over this area and then go in there again. Look at that. I'm done and <laughs> gone. <laughs> And if I want to put it in, I'm going to go with my white. And so I'm going to use my rigger brush. And this will be the, my detailed, super detailed. 
this is my final step. And I've been doing kind of my final step with the detail anyways, but this is my final, final step. <laughs> and so I'm going to put white all over the place. You know, this, this boat has a lot of white in it, a lot of different um, fishing boats. So there's a bunch of lines and all kinds of masts and... And then little dots for maybe these little posts and stuff and then put them right in the water. And also when you do that, just go right into the water and put them in down the water too at the same time. Same thing over here, all these little masks. And you don't have to put as many in, in the picture as there are. But why do I keep on dropping paint water on there? There's another mask back here. And so little by little it just comes up. Very, you know, it's not that tight. It looks tight and the longer I work on it, the tighter it'll look, but I'm just getting the main big areas, the big, big details. Working down less and less with more and more to the fine, fine details. Looks like I may have to put some black back in here. Ropes hanging on things. Any questions? The rope's hanging down here and Little things in the distance. Maybe over here there's a few boats with things on there. A little bit of black and we're done guys. Let me see a little bit of dark black. Gonna go put some windows in this boat. Put a line in here. All right, I think that's about it guys. I don't think I can do much more. A little more reflections. And well, hope you have a great, great Sunday. Put a little bit of this in there. This is where I can get my gloves. This is right about there. Else you see, <laughs> let's get over the top of this hill a little bit, and and like I said, I can go in there more and more and get things detailed up with thickness. Uh, again, I don't use my um, oil, uh, my gouache as as most traditional gouache painters do. Here, I'm going to put a little bit of thickness on there, see, because I want to get I want to get rid of that little mark underneath my paper. So here, I did I am using it thick, and I'm make it really white and thick white, and that's. Uh, Maybe I'll do that and I'll show you that you can use it thick like like oils like this and I can just go in here and get some more of these waves maybe going through there and again this is thick now and this is pretty thick and what a neat thing to be able to do you know I mean normally you're like oh no I can't use anything thick and then I clean that whole area up that was a stain on the bottom that I had for my portfolio that was in the portfolio of this piece of paper and so um it got wet and so it made that stain but look at that you can just go right back and I, these little lines will put in here and, I'm, and when I go in there I go pretty thick I don't wet it down and I'm just making it really nice and thick all right there we go guys have a great Sunday Go shopping and get all those gifts that you want. Ask for some gouache, uh, Holbein gouache in particular. I'll be putting this on YouTube and I'll have all the 
I'll have uh, the pallet and all those things from Amazon. I'll put the links on there and you can go ahead and buy that pallet. It's an awesome pallet. And I still don't remember the name. I'll put the name of the artist that um, I um, learned. Oh gosh, I can't believe I forgot his name. <laughs> I took his I took his workshop up in um, in Grand Marais at the Grand Marais Plein Air. And so until next until Thursday, come on back on Thursday and um, watch me and watch. We're going to be doing a abstract kind of poinsettia this week. And so getting excited for that hopefully and um we'll see you then all right oh, one more thing i just saw this i just noticed that i have to get a little bit of the thick thick red right here and the reflection and on the boat itself all right there we go <laughs> last thing all right until next time guys we'll see you next on thursday bye bye and merry christmas if i don't see if i don't talk to you until the, <laughs> and if you don't see my watch my stuff all right bye bye